Oh, hey guys, didn't see you there. Was just checking out the amazing benefits of trading with Mexi. The link is in the description if you want to get yourself $1,000 in bonuses and the cheapest fees out there. Trade on Mexi. Use the link in the description down below. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's 10 minutes after I did yesterday's show. Um, I genuinely was actually checking Mexi for a, a quick reason. Bitcoin still continues to drop where I am. We're now 48 hours on uh, from where you got. But we are going to take a dive back in history in tonight's live stream. So we're going to be taking a look specifically at what happened with Mt. Gox and the fact that the registration to claim your Bitcoin that you once lost is now closed. What does it mean? I don't know why my hands are doing all this. What does it mean for anyone that was on the Mt. Gox exchange and the Shanghai upgrade? We talked a little bit about this on the live stream Friday night. What does it truly mean? How much Ethereum is really going to hit the market and what could it genuinely do to the price? All of that in tonight's pre-recorded live stream again thank you so much for tuning in if you are in the chat please hit the like button drop a comment be as active as you possibly can it absolutely supports the algorithm it absolutely supports the channel it pumps the channel up and i'm sure i will be sat watching and maybe even commenting so if i am it's going on too bit check the mexi link <laughs> right let's get into it let's head on over and talk exactly what's going on uh, with Mount Gox. So Mount Gox repayment registration is closed. Here is what's next. But before we do that, we're going to take a step back in time. I'm going to take you back to 2010. This is when Mount Gox was originally created, handling 70% of every Bitcoin transaction that was happening. This article made 2014 very interesting as to what happens. It says Tokyo based Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox filed for bankruptcy last week, saying hackers had stolen the equivalent of $460 million from its online coffers. The news rocked the Bitcoin world and it could even bring down the much hyped digital currency. Like, you gotta understand that like, this was a big deal. Now, what is interesting, and the only way we can really do this is to go back into 2014. This is when the Mt. Gox uh, collapse and ultimately bankruptcy happened. If we go all the way back to 2014, you'll see Bitcoin here trading about $800. So when we think about this, $460 million divided by $800 is 575,000 Bitcoin. That's how much was lost. Times that by the current price, 28000 Currently would be worth $16.1 billion. Absolutely insane. But it says, from a distance, the world's largest Bitcoin exchange looked like a towering example of renegade entrepreneurism. But the inside, according to some of the, the, their Mt. Gox, was a messy combination of poor management, neglect, and raw experience. Tell me where we've seen this before. The collapse into bankruptcy last week and the disappearance of $460 million apparently stolen by hackers and another $27.4 million missing from its bank accounts came as little surprise to people who had knowledge of the Tokyo-based company's inner workings. The company said that they were largely a reflection of its CEO and majority stakeholder, Mark Capellas, a man who has more of a computer coder than a chief executive and yet was sometimes distracted even from his technical duties when they were the most needed. Mark liked the idea of being CEO, but the day-to-day -day reality bored him, says Mount Gox Insider, who spoke on condition on anonymity. So it goes on a lot. Ultimately, what happened? It was the central exchange. It was literally the only main exchange that could go there. You didn't have to use ID, mobile phones or anything. It was like super, super crazy of how you did it. It handles 70% of the entire Bitcoin transactions going through at that moment in time. And then all of a sudden, all this money went, it collapsed. Everybody at the time absolutely believed Mark Capellas was the main reason. He was the culprit that siphoned all of this money away. Now, you think history could repeat itself? Well, apparently it can. Duquad, Sam Bankman-Fried, our favorite Caroline Ellison, all doing the same thing. It is crazy what money can do to people. But we saw that. But what does it do? Fast forward to today and... 
The Mount Gox repayment registration. What is it all about? This is trying to get funds back to those people that lost it if they can prove that they lost the Bitcoin. It says, the saga of the Mount Gox cryptocurrency exchange and the repayments of its creditors continues. Now, this has been delayed and delayed and delayed. It says, on April 7th, the former exchange released a statement from its rehabilitation trustee, Nobuyaki Kubashai, saying, I don't know if I said that right, saying the deadline for creditors to provide their repayment information, clarification of payee and payment type has passed. It said that base repayment, intermediate repayment and early lump sum repayments will be carried out until October 31st, 2023. However, this final deadline might be extended with the permission of the Tokyo District Court. The note also said that the trustee would carry out the necessary preparation to make the repayments, including confirmation of the selections for repayment and sharing the information with banks, fund transfer providers, cryptocurrency exchanges, or any other custodian involved in the repayment. For this reason, the note read, in light of this, it is expected to take some time before the repayment is commenced. No one expected this. They are going to let banking systems know. They are going to let fund transfer providers know and cryptocurrency exchanges. Guess what? If you had a Mt. Gox Bitcoin back in 2014 and you are now going to cash this motherfucker out, you might be finding yourself paying some significant tax on that investment. The initial demise we talked about happened in 2014 where it was shut down. Um, and at the same time, March 2020, Kubashai announced a new system for the remaining funds to be claimed by creditors through proof of claim via bank statements, transaction records and identification documents. So the amount told nearly 16 billion or more available for repayment. So again, people are going to get this back. It's slightly skewed. I think people get something like half a Bitcoin based. I think they get half the value. Um, but yeah, crazy. They can get it in like early payments. They can get 90% of it. There's loads of different facets of it. If any of you guys are part of this, but it is a big step in the right direction. Will this, however, push the market price down? We'll talk about that when we get through the Ethereum news on the Shanghai upgrade. But... Let's just quickly head on over to the Marbles track. And again, welcome to everybody to this pre-recorded live stream. We do generally do these live 4 p.m. Eastern every single night. You'll see the communities down there chilling out. Again, we normally do these very much live. So these are, again, the top 50 from last night that are in here. We're going to head on over. We're going to pick a community map. We're going to do a nice speedy one. Here we go. Look, this one here looks like an adorable, lovely fun. Seems like a perfect opportunity to race this week. I'm keeping my eye on Bitcoin. I'm wondering if to get into another long trade. I wonder what the price will be. Bear in mind, it's Sunday night. Mm, don't know. We'll see. Right. Here we go. Good luck, everybody. Uh, I mean, it's not the craziest of tracks, but we'll see who gets in this one. I think that's meant to be Cupid's Arrow, isn't it? But yeah, Man Gox is crazy, man. Man Gox, absolutely insane to think about what might come out of there. So anyway, Kamal's up there. Kevin P's up there. Jimmy Judge, RH, making it happen. Ritu Beaver was a big winner in yesterday's show. We also have Sandor, Dillinger, Dave, M. Kriegs up there. Legendary Vern did have a disaster at the back end. I can obviously remember this because it happened about half an hour ago for me, whereas it happened 24 hours ago for you. <laughs> right. Kamal, Jamie Judge, all moving into the ball of despair here on the adorable, lovely fun track. We'll see how this all pans out. Like I said, I'm keeping my eye on Bitcoin to see what Bitcoin does. I'd love it to push 28.5, 28.6, something like that as we go through the weekend. Is retail on the Easter weekend going to come out and buy? Time will tell. And we've obviously got a four-day bank holiday weekend, so we'll see what that all looks like. But back to racing at hand. RH looking pretty fast. The JR coming through, probably in his backyard, sunning himself once again. RH looks like they're going to take this one. JR Mark Everest speeding through in third. Swamp B Ricky in there as well. Sam Bab, John Pringle, Shoesmith looking pretty fast. And then Magic Craig, N for Gaines, and Kevin Padley are going to round out your top 10. So congratulations to you guys. Okay. Now, the other interesting news, the Ethereum Shanghai upgrade could bring $2.4 billion of selling pressure to Ether. The 1 million instantly withdrawal Ether has become a point of concern for the market. Ethereum's backward incompatible Chappella hard fork and Shanghai upgrade slated to happen in eight days will let users withdraw their staked Ether. The lingering fear in the market is that the impending unlocking of ETH deposited in the network to boost security in return for rewards will see some holders rush to exchanges to liquidate their tokens. According to some observers, the results increase in selling pressure could be worth a couple of billion dollars. 1.1 million ETH related to partial reward withdrawals could face the market, while Celsius Network is likely to sell its 158,000 staked balance as part of its bankruptcy process. These two numbers represent nearly 1.3 million ETH, or approximately 2.4 billion dollars. Are we going to be in a world where we could pick up some dirt cheap Ethereum 
and at the same time see a massive amount come into the network. It says more than 18 million ETH has been staked in the network since the beacon chain went live in December 2020. While the entire balance cannot be unstaked immediately after the upgrade, about 1.1 million coins earned as rewards for staking can be instantly withdrawn. Ether stakers are paid rewards in ETH. Additional selling pressure could come from the bankrupt crypto lender Celsius. Now, bear in mind, obviously, we've seen Binance sniffing around trying to make sure these go through things like Voyager Celsius, all the rest of it as that collapse from FTX had those ripple effects into the rest of the cryptocurrency market. But Kraken will unstake all ETH staked by US investors as a result of its Wells notice from the Securities and Exchange Commission. And this could be a very interesting point where actually people are potentially going to make significant profits based on what was told to them at the point in which they staked it. I think that's where it could become very, very interesting, not only for people who are unstaking, but also the exchanges that are going to process some of these uh, some of these assets. You can see there, look, the ETH deposited and you can see how much in certain wallets are, wallet are done. I think we can bring this up in a bit of a better part. So you see there, Lido Finance ETH tokens at 5.6 million ETH as well as Kraken there, 923,000 ETH to staking. A number of other ones, Kraken, Stakefish, Binance there, 293. So a significant amount on quite a number of large exchanges could see a massive, massive liquidation of quite a number of these straight away when this unlocks. Is the big sell-off likely? Well, a lot of people say otherwise. It says the expected supply boost of more than 2 billion amounts to just 20% of Ether's average daily trading volume, according to data sourced from CoinGecko. Now, we can take a look over here on CoinMarketCap. We'll take a look at the overall cryptocurrency market. And you can see, actually, the volume daily is $8.3 billion dollars of ethereum so it says in other words the selling pressure will likely be distributed over several days allowing buyers to match the selling pressure thanks to the modest daily limit on the original 116.27 million eth its potential selling pressure is evenly distributed over a long time this should allow buyers to match their selling pressure saxo's bank cryptocurrency analyst mark eberhardt said in the shanghai upgrade preview eberhardt added a large share of ether stakers are long-term investors and are unlikely to liquidate their holdings after the upgrade and that's exactly what i talked about on our live stream last night is i don't believe people will just exit their positions sell everything they've got and hope for the best i do think that a lot of these people stake it for the long term they believe in the both the longevity of both cryptocurrency and the ethereum network so there'll be no reason do i think we'll see some downward pressure absolutely i think we'll see some i think we will see some sales but i don't think it's going to be as big as maybe people believe so given the fact Obviously, it's going to be about 20% of the entire trading volume of that day. You know there are going to be tons of buy orders set in. People are going to be waiting for it to dip to buy in. It's going to be a very, very interesting ride. We're going to, I'm definitely going to try and live stream the point in which it gets unlocked because I think we could see some incredible volatility in the market. It could be a real opportunity, though, to trade your pants off. And again, if you are interested in those cheaper trading fees and bonuses, sign up to Mexi. Link in the description. Definitely worthwhile. That's where I do a lot of my trading over there. I know a number of you guys already out there are having some very good returns with Mexi, particularly when we talk about new tokens, Casper, Nexa, um, all those Jasmine that are over on Mexi. Definitely worthwhile checking out. But that's going to do the end of this part. Let's head on over race number two, and then I'm back properly live tomorrow night. So I can't wait for that. It's going to be pretty exciting for Sunday. No, Monday, fun day. So that's going to be super cool. Right. Let's get this one done. And again, if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It is pretty different to what you see on normal cryptocurrency channels. We absolutely try and be a little bit different here on the channel. We are absolutely one for all. We're like the musketeers around here to try and help everybody succeed in this crazy world that we call cryptocurrency. And trust me, we're absolutely going to do it. Join the Discord. All the links in the description. Definitely worthwhile. Right. Good luck, everybody. Here we go. Uh, what is this one? Have we done this one before? Oh my god, what is this? What the hell is this? Get the hell oh, it's it! No way, bro! I don't like clowns. I'm not gonna lie. I actually don't like clowns. That is pretty scary, isn't it? I don't like that one bit. I wonder if he's has he got like Oh my god, what? <laughs> Does everyone get yeeted down there? Everyone gets yeeted down there. No way, bro. Cousin it. Not cousin it. It is getting hold of us. Oh, my God. What is going on? Look at this. We're in the depths of despair down in the dungeon. Not in the dungeon. Where does, he, where does he hang out? The sewer, like a weirdo. Um. Anyway, RH, mind all the pegs. Don't get yeeted on the pegs, everybody. Who's that? Hunter, no. Land it, Hunter. Land it. Oh, shit. Hunter didn't land it. Zwee, Coochie boy. That's how you do it, look, Hunter. Oh, I think Coochie got yeeted. 
Rixic, Fleet for Lop, 420. Fleet for Lop lands it. And 420 lands it as well. You legends. Look at that. Oh, who's that? Swamp. Is Swamp going to land it? Swamp looks like he could land this one. Swamp absolutely crushes it. Right. Michael Mabry, though, looking pretty fast. Blizzard X. Mind all the weird, like, dungeon people. Mind the weird dungeon people. Cash Nate flies through. End for Gains flies through. Oh, my God. There's a giant spider. It's all got a bit crazy. Who's got it? Just in Celia. 420's there after having an absolute yeet-a-thon. Who's coming through? Kamal, Blazer X. Where's the spider? Where does this teleport to? Where's the winning line? Anyone know? I have no idea. Who's going to get it? What the hell? Oh, my God. You're up here. What is going on? Anyone know? Shoesmith. P. Ricky. Blazer X, Kamal, Michael Mabry, Cashnate, Rushin, Pugamol, Tooch, and N for Gains. Man, that was a sick track, actually. I really kind of enjoyed that track. That was super cool. It is quarter to one in the morning for me here, by the way. So, And uh, my house is getting a little bit cold again because it gets cold on the night. And remember, I've got hardly any walls in the house. But there we go. There is the rounding out race number two. Like I said, don't you concern yourselves. I'm going to be back live tomorrow. But how does the leaderboard look like going into? And we might end up with another rollover, just to pre-warn you, because uh, the fund isn't massive. But we'll see. Here we go. Pokeball's still there, but Piriki is closing in like a legend. Magic Craig is there in third. Mark Everest, Beaver, Shoesmith, Dillinger, Dave, Blazer X, James, Nazar, and Swamp. Vern is just falling away. Come on, Vern. I believe in the power of the Vern for tomorrow night. But as ever, thank you so much for tuning in to this pre-recorded live stream. We're going to be back live tomorrow night. If you haven't already, again, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, drop a comment, push the YouTube algorithm. Let's get ready to send this channel to oblivion. Remember, um, I was going to say my success is your success. It's not absolutely true. I genuinely am grateful you spend some time with me right here. We are building something truly fantastic on this channel. And yeah, we might not have 50,000 subscribers. Yeah, we might not have 200 people on our live stream. But do you know what? We've got people that count and that's you. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. I'll see you all back here tomorrow night, 4 p.m. Eastern. Don't be late. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.